any desires for finding some sort of extraterrestrial life inside our own nearby planet group once experienced a blow with a new paper proposing Saturn's biggest moon is possibly fruitless. While later concerns have arisen about the plausibility of outsider life inside our planetary group, a staggering revelation by NASA has changed the hypothesis, life has been distinguished on Titan, Saturn's greatest moon. Titan, a heavenly body that represents the universe's remarkable variety, presently allures with new interest. Notwithstanding its clearly unfilled appearance, Titan appears to hold life structures dissimilar to anything we've ever seen. What new revelations has the scientific community made on Titan? What lies under the surface of Titan's dim lakes? What secrets do its frozen scenes cover? Does Titan harbor living things like our own Earth? Join us as we explore how NASA finally found life on Titan and the astonishing new revelations about Saturn's moon. Titan is Saturn's greatest moon and the second largest in the solar system, outperforming all of the solar system's dwarf planets. It is the only moon known to have a thick atmosphere, as well as the only known object in space other than Earth with obvious proof of stable surface fluid bodies. Titan is one of Saturn's seven gravitationally circular moons and is the second most distant of all. Titan, normally referred to as a planet-like moon, is half greater in width than Earth's moon and 80% more gigantic. It will be the second biggest moon in the nearby planetary group, later Jupiter's moon Ganymede. Titan is greater than Mercury, however, it is only 40% as massive due to Mercury's composition, predominantly of hard iron and rock, while Titan is created essentially of less dense ice. Discovered in 1655 by Dutch cosmologist Christian Huygens, Titan was Saturn's originally known moon and the sixth known planetary satellite. Titan circles Saturn at 20 Saturn radii. Saturn subtends a circular arc of 5.9 degrees from Titan's surface, and if apparent through the moon's thick atmosphere, it would look 0.4 times greater in width overhead than the moon from Earth, which subtends a 0.48 degrees circular arc. For a long time, the moon, which is generally two times the size of Earth's moon, was viewed as the most feasible possibility for outsider life in the planetary group. The Huygens Atmospheric Construction Instrument has led the main institute perceptions of Titan's environment. It estimated climate temperature, tension, and density from a high of 1,400 kilometers to the surface. Long before the Huygens mission arrived on Titan, researchers knew that the moon's thick environment was principally made of nitrogen, with some methane. Anyway, the construction of the climate, including temperature and strain at different elevations, was inadequately perceived. The Huygens hardware straightforwardly evaluated the thickness of the upper environment by measuring the test's deceleration rate as it slipped into the environment. The temperature was determined utilizing forecasts of how it ought to vary with thickness and height. Huygens straightforwardly kept strain and temperature in a lower climate under 160 km and on Titan's surface, as well as electrical boundaries, including permittivity and particle circulation. ASI's data uncovered that the upper environment, the thermosphere, was typically hotter and denser than anticipated. Titan's climate was likewise found to be delineated over 500 km, the typical temperature was around minus 100 degrees Celsius, albeit significant varieties of 10 to 20 degrees Celsius were seen in view of reversal layers and different peculiarities like gravity waves and tides. In opposition to hypothetical projections, the mesosphere was nearly totally missing, temperatures increased quickly under 5,100 km, topping at minus 87 degrees Celsius at the highest point of the stratosphere at 250 km elevation. The temperature then, at that time, logically fell throughout the stratosphere, arriving at least minus 23 degrees Celsius at 44 km. This showed the boundary between the stratosphere and the lower atmosphere. The temperature increased again as the test drew closer to the surface, coming to a freezing minus 10 degrees Celsius at the landing spot. The surface tension was 1.47 times higher than on Earth. A large number of different instruments, including the Hubble Space Telescope and the Cassini Orbiter instruments, were utilized to quantify Titan's environment. These estimations identified proof of gases that suggest organic substances after the Cassini-Huygens mission. 
the fact that many of Titan's lakes are probably comprised of fluid methane instead of water was initially disheartening but kept the mystery of whether life could exist on Titan progressing. Titan, Saturn's moon, is a fascinating world that from a good distance looks like the greenish-brown counterpart of Earth. In fact, Titan and Earth are the only celestial bodies identified in a nearby planetary group with stable clouds. The Huygens mission, with twin space apparatus sent off from NASA's Florida spaceport in October 1997, was destined for Saturn and Titan. It investigated Saturn for around 30 years, while the lander's lifespan was assessed to be much more limited. Huygens had one reason from the beginning, to fly through Titan's atmosphere and land on its surface. On December 25, 2005, the second part of the mission occurred, Huygens was isolated from Cassini, and after 14 days, the lander plunged into Titan's atmosphere, holding tight a parachute. Huygens burned through two hours and 28 minutes gathering information in the atmosphere before arriving on the surface and gathering information for an extra 56 minutes. Since those groundbreaking hours, we on Earth have learned much more about Titan's genuine nature. However, the mission is yet to answer all the puzzles surrounding this interesting moon. Titan's climate is wealthy in nitrogen, like our own on Earth, with critical degrees of methane, hydrocarbons, and proof of organic particles. Titan has a nitrogen grouping of 98.4% with no oxygen in its environment. Methane exists in the higher layers of the environment because of its low thickness. Strangely, different natural atoms, for example, ethane, propane, ethene, and hydrogen cyanide were found. Hydrogen could likewise recognize hints of helium, carbon dioxide, and water. Despite the fact that nitrogen has a significant impact in the terrestrial cycles that permit organic life to exist, the environments of Titan and our Earth contrast considerably since Titan has no oxygen. Since the mission began, planetary researchers have utilized the Cassini Shuttle Radar Framework and Visible and Infrared Mapping Spectrometer, VMS, to analyze the composition of the region Hyan cruised across. Before Hyan, Titan's surface was a complete secret. The explanation was straightforward, it was darkened by a thick cloud. As the test infiltrated the layer of fog inside the air, Hyen uncovered a previously imperceptible world. According to Jean-Pierre Lebrun, a project researcher, Lauren Sodom of the U.S. Geological Survey has been attempting to figure out what Hyen saw. Finding Hyen's landing area in Cassini photographs ended up being one of the most challenging issues. When we checked out the Synthetic Aperture Radar SAR, pictures and contrasted them with the VMS data, we saw little connection, Lawrence Oblum said. Lawrence Sodom, known for his contributions to imaging science, served as the head of the astrogeology section. The radar scans didn't show the boundary between the astounding highlands and dark swamps that Hyen went over. Eventually, a piece of information showed up as two lone dark sand dunes around 30 kilometers north of the landing area, visible in both SAR and Hyen photographs. They are in all likelihood comprised of sugar-sized hydrocarbon grains of somewhere in the range of 100 and 300 microns in diameter. A large portion of Titan's rises are monstrous, up to 100 kilometers above the dark fields and isolated by 10 miles. More significantly, two ridges apparent in both radar and optical photographs furnished the researchers with the data they expected to begin their study. We started to sort out a model of the manner in which we think the surface acts, Sodom said. In this hypothesis, the area surrounding Hyen's landing site is an immense plain of disgusting water ice covered by layers of organic carbon-bearing deposits that form the brilliant highlands and dim hills. The brilliant layers are invisible to radar frequencies, thus, Cassini's photographs can glance through to the base. The dirty water ice layer, which is rough in some places and smooth in others, creates when sunlight, UV light, and charged particles react with Titan's copious methane at high elevations, producing carbon and hydrogen-bearing hydrocarbon particles like ethane and acetylene, as well as more complicated nitrogen-bearing mixtures known as tholin. These products tumble down to the surface as sprayers, like how brown haze particles create and cover Earth's surfaces. Anyway, on Titan, these stores can amass the depths of many meters. The hills are comprised of sand-sized flotsam and jetsam that gathered during its drop or was remodeled by topographical cycles on the surface. 
the ice and organic scenes are as unique as they are brilliant. Toward the north of Hyann's landing site are the brilliant highlands, which have channels that split four or multiple times as they move into the hills. Stereoscopic photographs from the Hyann Descent Imager Spectral Radiometer DISR, camera have now been inspected, revealing that a portion of the edges between the channels reach levels of 150 to 200 m and have slants of 30 degrees. This incredibly rough landscape makes sense of sodium. The plan suggests that these are waste trenches with fluid methane pouring as rain, closed by our thick set gullies with few branches. They were most likely created by spring draining, a process in which methane goes through the subsurface prior to showing up as a spring close to the foundation of a slope. The spring dissolves the slope, forcing it to fall and make a precipice face. The third segment is a level dark plain, principally water ice, joined with organic coarseness. Titan's river channels, gullies, and flood plains rival the assortment seen on Earth. The dim plains uncover signs that show in that the locale every so often gets streak floods, albeit not from the highland waste channels. Rather, huge measures of fluid methane seem to flow east-west. Planetary researchers may now begin to remake the chain of events that brought about the improvement of this remarkable territory. Hyan and Cassini have moved forward in our comprehension of Titan, Sodom said. Hyan was the principal test to arrive on a moon other than Earth's moon. NASA and other space organizations at first showed little interest in Saturn and Jupiter's moons. Global interest only grew because Titan makes a strange mirror of Earth. From that point forward, tests and telescopes have found countless extra moons circling the gas giants, each with its own specific surface circumstances, volcanism, and water. Unlike the gas monsters, which are barely comprised of solid parts, these moons are rough worlds like Earth. When Hyann arrived on Titan, it found a ruddy, unforgiving climate of rocks and bluffs, as well as signs of seashores. Hubble and Cassini estimations affirm that Titan has a sea. Titan's surface is dim brown and rosy due to organic material stores. The region where the test landed is disgusting with water and hydrocarbons and has a consistency similar to clammy sand or earth. In the wake of examining Hyann and Cassini information, it became apparent that Titan's lakes contain fluid methane. Maybe other overfluid water methane is a dull gas that happens on the planet in many structures, including petroleum gas and biogas, and is used as an energy source. In nature, marshes and woods can make more methane. Man-made methane is created from rice development, landfills, and cow's stomach-related frameworks. Methane, alongside carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, is a seemingly perpetual ozone-harming substance that has a huge effect on the human-induced nursery effect on Earth. Does all that here eventually go against life on Titan? The failure was at first boundless on Earth. A large number of researchers accepted that there might be methane-based life, however, more voices quickly emerged to propose that this is possible with our limited comprehension of the universe and its unique happenings. How might we be sure that there are no species somewhere whose organic entities get by on methane as opposed to water and can breathe in nitrogen rather than oxygen? Opponents contend that Saturn's moon Titan lies beyond Earth's habitable zone and hence can't support essential living things like microorganisms or green algae. The planet and its moon get undeniably less daylight than we do on Earth, Venus, and Mars. Anyway, this condition, alongside Titan's incredibly low average temperature of minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit, doesn't essentially preclude the chance of life. Fish and mollusks are models of complicated living structures that exist on Earth a long way from sunlight and intensity. Complex living beings like mollusks and fish exist in the Mariana Channel, six miles beneath the water's surface, where they have never seen daylight. Microorganisms have been found close to the poles, and an assortment of mushrooms, lichen, and crude organic entities get by in Chile, forlorn caverns. So, we should be wary while claiming that life would only be able to be supported by light, intensity, and oxygen. But what might be said about Titan? Would it need its own magnetic field? Could this be the reason Saturn's moon might not have any life at all? No, not necessarily, say some hopeful scientists. The moon's environment is predominantly exposed to sunlight-based breezes, 
especially in its outer layers. Anyway, increasing UV and cosmic radiation levels probably won't bar the making of life. Again, there are several models on Earth where life forms, including green algae, endure well with serious UV levels, so living under brutal conditions is without a doubt conceivable. Thus, scientists have proceeded to look for hints of life on Titan. Furthermore, they track down it. After the Huygens mission, it became apparent that the 32 lakes seen on Titan's surface so far are probably loaded up with fluid methane instead of water. Methane becomes fluid on the Moon's surface because of the roughly half greater pressure. Space telescopes in the Cassini mission were able to uncover frozen seas, which ended up being an astonishing revelation. This is because subsequent estimations revealed that the seas are made out of water instead of fluid methane. Scientists even expect that there is fluid water behind a thick layer of ice, with temperatures above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Assuming this revelation is validated, it is practically conceivable that this expanse of water could harbor some type of life or a forerunner, for example, microbes or single-celled life forms. Another test is currently being positioned to test water on Titan. A drill would need to break the thick layer of ice to bring down a measure into Titan's oceans. Plans to develop such drills are already in progress. German engineers are developing high-performance drills in the icy among other areas to drill into the ice layers of Titan and Jupiter's frosty moon Enceladus for impending space missions. Titanian life is conceivable. As per lab recreations in 2010, specialists from the University of Arizona demonstrated in the research facility that life on Titan is, in fact, possible. They precisely duplicated the circumstances in the moon's gas shell, utilizing a mix of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide that matches the cosmetics of Titan's air. The researchers were able to create amino acids even when exposed to more significant levels of radiation. Those who want to observe real extraterrestrial life or lifelike beings on another planet or moon will be disappointed if they only find bacteria or organisms. However, the smallest living creatures would just be the start. Moreover, we humans would need to believe that we wouldn't be totally alone in the universe. As researchers more deeply study Titan's composition and climate, the question remains, might Titan at any point support life forms unlike anything we've ever seen before?